a short vector in our lattice and now we need to actually show that it works so um, I'll call this Q this is going to be our target polynomial so so we want to bound the um, absolute value of the um, evaluation of Q of R, and we want this to be less than N. Um, so we know that this is less than the L1 norm of the vector that we found in the lattice, and we know that this is less than, say, square root of dimension of uh, the L2 norm of this vector. Um, and then this is going to be less than, OK, there's going to be a square root of dimension, which we don't really care about. And there's going to be a 2 to the dimension L. And I'm going to just drop the 1 fourth because I don't really care. And then determine it to the 1 over dimension. and. Um, so if, uh, say, square root of dimension 2 to the dimension determinant to the 1 over the dimension, is that, if that is strictly less than our modulus n, then we're done. Because then we've established that um, evaluated at any of the roots that we're looking for is going to be zero over the integers and then we just solve it okay so that means that in order to check whether this works the only thing that we need to, to verify is whether the determinant of the dimension of the lattice actually satisfy this bound that we're looking for um, So in this um, explicit computational example, the, our input polynomial is, all right, we've got our ciphertext C and our approximation to the message A, and so we have f of x is, um, let me make sure I get this right, uh, x plus, uh, here, I'll maybe, all right, a plus x cubed minus c. And I know that if I plug in the root swordfish here, this is going to be 0 mod n. So that's the root I'm looking for. And the basis set of polynomials that I chose is actually just f. Um, so f has degree 3. I chose x squared n. That happens to vanish mod n. Um, x times n. That vanishes mod n. And that totally vanishes mod n. That's my basis. Um, and so the explicit um, embedding there. Sorry, there's a capital X there, and I'm using capital R here, because um, like there's no difference between little x and big x on the. Um, so my, my embedding is going to be like R cubed, and then like, OK, 3A. Uh, R squared uh, 3A squared R A cubed minus C and then uh, let's see N times R squared N times R and N. So the 
This is the coefficient embedding of um, of this guy. This is the coefficient embedding of this guy. This is the coefficient embedding of this guy. And this is the coefficient embedding of this guy. Um, so if I want to explicitly compute the determinant, okay, so the dimension is for the determinant. Well, this is conveniently an upper triangular. Oh, so yeah? All the rest are zeros, right? Yeah, all the rest are zeros. Yeah, thanks. Zero, 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 uh, zero, yeah. there we go, yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, so the determinant um, is just the product of the diagonals, so we've got r to the sixth n cubed, um, and I'm going to appeal to four being small and say that square root of four times two to the four is not something that we really need to worry about with um, RSA size numbers. So I'm just gonna drop it. Also, um, these approximation factors go away in, in such small uh, dimensions. Okay, so I just want to check whether determinant to the one or dimension is less than n to give me approximately whether it'll work. Okay, so, so r to the sixth n cubed to the one fourth should be less than n. And all right, so I get like r to the sixth is less than n. So r should be less than n to the one sixth. All right, so I have a degree three polynomial, but I got a one sixth there. So we didn't quite get all the way to n, n to the one over d, but we did pretty well for a, a dimension four lattice, I think. Um, so there's, uh, if you want to actually get, okay, so, so this means that for any root that's less than n to the one sixth, this will, this will find it. I'll just be explicit. Um, and say that I carefully chose swordfish to have the right length um, with respect to the modulus. Okay, I have to log in again, so I won't do that since I'm almost out of time. But um, there's uh, two things that you need to do to actually get all the way to the n over one of d, and it's a lot more complicated. So first is you need to have your polynomials vanish mod to a higher multiplicity mod n. So you take powers of this ideal. And then um, you might take here, I just took degree three polynomials, but you're gonna wanna take um, much higher degrees. And then there's an annoying um, optimization problem of how do you set um, for the roots and how do you set your total degree, which is gonna be the dimension of your lattice. It's also gonna be the highest number of possible roots that you could get out of, um, out of this method since you are going to be finding roots of a polynomial with degree, whatever your bound is. Um, so if you run through the optimization um, of both of those parameters, that's how you get this n to the one over d. So um, this is super useful because it tells you that um, basically RSA with bad padding and low exponent is insecure. And so you had, if you're going to use RSA, you'd better be very careful that your adversary can't guess some of your message. Um, so this is why cryptography is hard. Um, so I'll finish just by stating a result. Um, you might ask like, can you improve this? And I have a paper from a few years ago with Ted Schinberg, Brett Hemingway, and um, Zachary Scher that shows that basically any method that looks like this, that's constructing an auxiliary polynomial um, that preserves all of the um, algebraic and p-adic roots of f in addition to the integer ones, you're not gonna be able to get do better than n to the one over d. So if you want to do better, you're gonna need to have some more clever uh, result. So I think our problem session is tomorrow morning. So you get to implement this for your very self. Um, so bring your laptops and be prepared to have more fun with Jupyter. So that is all I have, so thank you. Okay, are there any questions?
Ja? Um, then you plug them into uh, F and you check whether it's zero mod n. And if it satisfies, then that's a solution to your problem. Sorry, what, what, what was that? Oh, it's just a combination of these? Um, so we, let's see. Um, you, I mean, it's not going to be possible to find a combination of this that's in, in this construction that's, that's less than n. Um, and uh, we actually, I mean, we just showed that um, any, any polynomial that is short enough um, will actually have all of our desired roots um, as its solution. Yeah. But yes, it is, um, it is definitely the case that when you're implementing this, and like with all of these lattice-based methods, getting the parameters right is super important, because if you mess up, then the lattice reduction algorithm will find you something potentially not what you're looking for. Um, but here, we have the guarantee that actually any sufficiently short vector is a solution to our problem. Hey, are there other questions? Um, so you can use values other than three fourths in LOL. Does that change the result we get here at all? Like FPLOL point nine nine or something? So okay, yeah. Can you do better by getting a better approximation factor? Um, so for the one of the cool things about Coppersmith's method is that you only need an exponential approximation factor. Um, there are other variants of this method where doing getting a better approximation factor does help. So if you start looking at multivariable polynomials, so instead of just like one variable, you have many, um, then uh, that's when the approximation factor seems to, um, seems to come in. But yeah, it's cool that um, this is a polynomial time algorithm because all you need is LLL. And what happens is if you run through the optimization, um, this two to the dimension turns into a factor of two in the size of the root that you can find. And then, um, then you just brute force like one bit. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's actually one of the surprising things. It's one of the few lattice methods where um, you only need an exponential approximation factor. Okay. Any more? Any more questions? Okay. Let's thank you. Yes, and 